Let's see. Okay, so we are recording now. Um, so again, I apologize for the for the late notice on on this having to be a a remote lecture for for today. Um, uh, let me go ahead and switch to my digital paper here. And I'll bring up the chat so I can see if there are any questions. Let's see, where is that? There it is. So this, this lecture will be recorded and I will be uploading the digital notes as well. Um, again, if, in case anybody has, has connection or internet connectivity issues. Uh, so to start off with, let's uh, let me let me ask um, if there are any questions from from last class or any of the the material so far. Um, and if you do have a question, you can uh, feel free to use the audio uh, if you're brave enough. If not, you can type it in chat. I will be keeping an eye on chat uh, to see if there are any questions. Um, but are there any any questions from from last class? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. You might still be typing. If you do have some, that's fine. Uh, again, I will keep an eye on chat. Uh, but if there are no questions, let's go ahead and, and begin. Um, now, I, I believe I said last last time that uh, today we'd, we'd uh, finish seven, sing, and start on chapter one. Uh, but checking the course schedule, uh, today we're just going to finish chapter seven. I didn't have chapter one um, as being on, on the schedule. So we won't, we won't start chapter one today. Um, but we will we will finish chapter seven. So the last section we have in chapter seven is section seven C, which is the law of large numbers. Now this section, um, compared with the the previous two sections in in chapter seven, um, comparatively has has. Uh, small amount of of material but it does get a bit in depth and can can be complicated depending on the problem that you're looking at so we will take a take a bit of time looking at some of the examples and um, going through some of the examples most of the examples I have here today will be from the book uh, so that you can look at those um, on your own time as well uh, in more detail if, if you should need so let's go ahead and start off with what the law of large numbers states, and then we'll look at, at um, the applications of it. So the law of large numbers is what we're going to start with. And so we're going to start with an event, let's call it A, for which we know the probability, probability of A. So we're going to consider some event A, again, with the probability that we either know or can calculate probability of A um, in a single trial. Okay. Uh, then the law of large numbers, we have two parts to this. The first part says, for a large number of trials, the proportion or we could also say, instead of proportion, we could say ratio or fraction. All of these three words are the same thing, mean the same thing. So um, proportion, the ratio or the fraction in which the event occurs, so in which A occurs, will be close 
to what we have as the probability of A. So um, we have a large number of trials uh, and that, that does sound a little vague, but it, it would be what you would think it was. It wouldn't be something in, in the single or double digits. Probably want at least 100. Um, that might be on the, on the uh, smaller side of large. Uh, but you have this large number of trials. Let's take, for example, we are flipping a coin, take, um, a, fair, a fair coin. And so we flip it and let's say, what is the probability of getting a heads? And I know that you guys probably know this already, uh, but let's go ahead and, um, and you can either answer on the audio or, or type it in chat. What is the probability of, of uh, getting a heads on the, on the coin toss? Is one half, that is correct. One half or as a fraction, uh, sorry, that's as a fraction. As a decimal would be 0.5 or 50% uh, would be as a, as a percentage. So if we uh, toss the coin, let's say uh, 200 times, uh, or let's make it even, even bigger, let's say 1,000 times, so we're, gonna, we're gonna do 1,000 coin tosses, then the number of times that, that a heads shows up, that this, this event occurs, should be around 50%. So it should be around 500. It might be uh, higher than 50%, it might be lower than 50%, but it will be close to 50%. Uh, that's the first part. The second part of the law of large numbers says that the larger the number of trials, so as we increase the number of trials, then the proportion, the closer the, the proportion will be to the probability. So the larger the number of trials, the closer we are going to get to this probability. Uh, so the closer the proportion Oh, okay, hold on one second, let me Is anyone else having some issues with the uh, screen share? Can you guys see the digital screen all right or is that not working? Let me... Let me see, okay, so we do have, all right. So um, I'm not sure what's going on on, on your side, uh, but it looks like it might be an issue. Um, Yeah, yeah. Try rejoining rejoining the meeting, and and uh, hopefully that will fix the problem. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, let me go ahead and finish uh, finish writing this. So, um, closer the proportion should be to the probability. Oh, excellent, okay. I'm glad that that fixed the, the issue. Very good, okay. Um, so the second part says that the, the, the more trials we perform, uh, then the closer that this proportion or this uh, ratio of fraction will get closer to the probability of A. Um, and again, it might be a little bit higher, it might be a little bit lower, but uh, the more trials we have, uh, as we increase the number of times that we, we run this experiment, the closer it will be to the, the probability of A. Uh, now, whenever we have a law like this or something similar in mathematics, we always want to determine uh, when is it safe to use this. And so we want to note that uh, this, this law holds under the following conditions. So, Uh, this law holds as long as each trial is independent uh, 
of prior trials. Uh, so that we have the individual um, the individual trial has that probability, probability of A. Uh, so in the example that we did, the coin toss, um, it doesn't matter how many times we flipped the coin previously, that's not going to affect what our probability is for getting heads or tails on the next flip. Uh, so that, that means that that, uh, that is independent of prior trials, so law of large numbers does apply to that. So anything um, in which that's, that is the case, the law of large numbers will, will apply to. Uh, now let's look at an example in the book. And again, um, most of the examples we're going to look at will be from the book uh, because of the uh, just to, to give you guys uh, some something to refer to in more detail if you would need. So let's look at example one. And this is in the book on page 454. So that's where you can find this, uh, this example. And so first I'll, I'll read the problem for you guys and then we'll, we'll uh, go through it as class. So uh, this this uh, example we're talking about a roulette wheel. So actually, let me let me switch this. I have an image of a roulette wheel. So here is here is this uh, a standard roulette wheel. Um, they're they're not necessarily all the same. The numbers might be jumbled in a different way, or the um, the red and the black uh, might be shuffled around as well. Um, but this is this is one of your standard roulette wheels. And so, um, as you can see on, on the roulette wheel, uh, a standard one has 38 numbers, 18 of which are black, 18 of which are red, and two are green, the uh, zero and the double zero here. And we're going to assume that all possible outcomes have equal probability. So again, um, it's, it's completely fair. It's not weighted in any way. And uh, we're going to ask two questions then. Uh, the first question is, what is the probability of getting a red number on any spin? And so that, that first question uh, that, we, that we ask, that is finding our, our um, theoretical probabilities. So that's not anything different from what we've done in the past. And then the second question is, if a, if a patron in the casino uh, spins the wheel 100,000 times, about how many times will a red number be the outcome? So that second part is, is uh, with the uh, law of large numbers applied. Okay, so let's go back to our digital paper here. And uh, let's go ahead and write, write down what we have. So we have a roulette wheel. Um, has 38 numbers. We have 18 are red numbers, 18 are black, and two are green. And that's not letting me write. Let me adjust the page. Green, there we go. Um, and so the two questions that we're going to ask again, the first one is what is the probability of getting a red. On a single spin. And the second question we're going to ask is if we have uh, if someone spins the wheel we'll say one 100,000 times about how many times um, will a red number occur? Okay. 
So let's answer the first one. So the first one, pardon me. The first one, again, this is the same as uh, what we've done with theoretical probability in the past. So we're looking at what is the probability of getting a red? Well, we have 38 numbers. How many of those are red? There are 18. So what's the probability of getting a red here? <coughs> So the probability of getting a red is can you can type in chat or say on the audio. Let me help you out something out of 38. Oh good 18 yes that's right 18 out of 38. Oh good I'm seeing it on the chat now okay so there's probably a delay. <laughs> so I apologize for that uh, delay there that's fine 18 out of 38 is correct. Uh, let's get the decimal for that. So uh, we, um, let me see, I have my four function here. You get the decimal for that. That's 18 out of 38 is, and it's round to three decimal places. I think we want three decimal places, yeah. So around this to three decimal places, that's 0 0.474 when we round it. Or as a percent, that would be 47.4%. So that is the first part, A. And again, A is not anything different from what we've done in the past. That is um, just finding our theoretical probability. Okay, so part B is the law of large numbers. So in part B, by the, lar by the law of large numbers, the uh, amount that the red number shows up. Uh, so the number of red occurrences, let's say, should be close to this same percent. So it should be close to 47.4%. Um, and I just lost my cursor. There we are. Should be close to this 47.4%. And so um, uh, hopefully you've seen this in previous math courses, but if not, we'll, we'll go through that now. Uh, we want 47.4% then of the 100,000 times that we're spinning the wheel. So to get that, we multiply the percent in its decimal form, so the 0.474 times the number we want the percent of, that's the 100,000. And that will give us the 47.4% of the 100,000. Um, and in this case, we're going to get uh, 47,400 times or something close to that. That is, that is about how many times that the uh, red, that a red number should appear. Uh, and again, um, it's not going to be exactly, it, it will almost never be exactly that number. It will usually be either above or below, uh, but it will be close. And as we increase the number of times we spin the wheel, it will get closer and closer to that 47.4%. Um, so any, any questions on, on this example or anything up to this point? Um, again, you can just let me know or you can uh, through the audio. And, uh, that's, that's perfectly fine. Or you can uh, type it in chat. I am keeping, keeping an eye on chat. Okay, so no questions so far, so we'll continue on. Um, and you might still be typing, which is fine. I'll just keep my eye on chat in case there are any questions. Uh, let, me, let me adjust this. Okay, so that's the first part of the section is on the law of large numbers. So again, it, it consists of those two parts. Um, the first part that if you have a large enough number of trials that the proportion will be close to the probability of A. And the second part is as the 
number of trials increases, the proportion will get closer to probability of A. Um, so I guess this, this also does work in, in, in the terms of if you were uh, wanting to determine the probability of rolling a one on a, um, on a weighted die, uh, then you would use the, the law of large numbers would apply because again, each roll of the die uh, does not affect the next roll or the, the previous rolls do not affect the current roll or the next roll. Um, so you would uh, roll the die a large number of times, which again, that's, it sounds kind of vague, but again, probably nothing less than 100 would, <laughs> 100 would probably be the smallest number you'd wanna go to with that. And then you'd, um, you could calculate the probability of, a, of rolling a one on that, on that uh, weighted die. Okay, uh, the next part of this section is probably, um, so the law of large numbers is, is pretty important. The next part is expected value, which is also a very, uh, very important part of, of chapter seven. And, and in fact, uh, when we're working on our, on our uh, group projects, which we will start next week, um, you're going to be looking for expected value. So uh, let's look at what is expected value. Now expected value can be calculated for um, any number of situations. Uh, uh, most of the examples, uh, actually I'd say all of the examples that I've really seen in the textbook are use, uh, using the expected value to determine uh, things like uh, to evaluate gambling games. It does have other applications, but we'll stick with what the book, what the book has. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, we're going to start off with something simple with just two events. So let's consider two events. I'm gonna say event one, I'm gonna use uh, E1 for that. And event two will be E2. Um, each with its own value. And probability. So when we're talking about value, and again, this is, um, this is why most of the time this is applied to gambling games. We're looking at what is, um, in terms of a gambling game, what is the payout for that event occurring? So take, for example, let's say I'm rolling two die and if I get two sixes, I double my money. So that would, that would be the value would be, let's say if I bet dollar, it would be $2 would be the value of that event. Um, so we're looking at, at that. Or if, if we uh, get zero money, then that would be the value of that event. Uh, then the expected value is calculated as, as following, I'm gonna use uh, EV for expected value, is going to be the value of event one times its probability, probability of event one occurring plus the value of event two times the probability of event two occurring. And this will, um, this will generalize as well for any number of events. So if you have a third event, uh, you would add the value of event three uh, times its probability. You had a fourth event plus the value of event four times its probability. So um, maybe we'll, we'll write that here. This generalizes to any number of events. Okay. So um, let's, let's look at, an, a, at a, a simple example first kind of get our, our bearings on, on this um, expected value. So let's say we're playing a gambling game involving a coin toss. So we wanna play a gambling game. On a coin toss. Um, 
I'm going to say uh, we are betting one dollar. If we get heads, uh, then we get, let's say, a dollar fifty. And it's not going to let me. <laughs> Sorry, let me adjust the paper a little bit. Okay. And if it's tails, we get nothing. Let's uh, find the expected value. OK. So for this example, we have a coin toss. Um, now, one thing that's going to be weird uh, with these expected value usually uh, is something that you don't necessarily think about. Uh, we're going to have three events. Uh, the event, whenever we are playing a gambling game, uh, the first event is going to be to play, is going to be that initial bet. So we're going to assume that that is going to happen. So let's, let's write our events here. The value of the event and its probability. So the event one is we're going to play. So uh, playing this game, um, how much do we bet, uh, how much do we pay in to play this game? One dollar. So are we gaining a dollar or losing a dollar? Should this be positive or negative? Lose. So we're going to say that the value is a negative one dollar. And the probability we're going to say is one, because we're going to assume that we are playing the game. Otherwise, we can't calculate expected value. So again, that first event is going to be, it is a little bit odd from what you're used to. The first event, whenever we're playing a gambling game, is to play. We're going to say the probability is one because, again, we're looking at what is the expected value if we play. All right. So if we get heads, the expected value is we will get a dollar fifty back. So I'm going to say that's positive one fifty. Um, you don't have to write the positive there, but I want to emphasize that since, again, we do have to make a distinction between positive and negative. And the probability of getting heads is one half, or 0.5. You can use either the fraction or the decimal. And then the last event is tails. And what we get from that is zero. And the probability is one half. So to find the expected value, what we're going to do is we multiply the value with its probability and then add all of those together. So the expected value in this case for this example, we're going to have negative one times one for our first event plus 150 times one half for our second event plus zero times one half for our third event. And we can just plug all of this into our four function calculator. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, and uh, usually with these, you want to enter it in all at the same time. So negative one times one plus one fifty times one half plus zero times one half. And so what we should get for this is negative 0 0.25, or we're going to say negative 25 cents. Uh, that there should be a zero there, sorry. 0 0.25. Okay. So the expected value for this, for one, one round, is we're, we are expecting to lose 25 cents. That's how the probabilities work out for this particular gambling game. Um, 
that's our expected value. Uh, let's look at another example. And the second example we're going to uh, use from the, from the textbook. So this next example that we're going to look at is example two in this uh, section 7C. So this is in the book on page 456. So again, I'll, I'll read it through first and then we will look at uh, the questions that are presented for this one. So in this one, uh, example one, uh, sorry, example two, we're on example two now. So in example two, we're going to buy a lottery ticket that costs a dollar. So we're buying a $1 lottery ticket uh, and that has the following probabilities and values. So we have a one in five chance to win a free ticket, which again, the tickets are worth $1. We have a one in 100 chance to win $5, one in 100,000 to win $1,000, and one in 10 million to win $1 million. Um, we wanna know what is the expected value of the lottery ticket? So we're going to look at um, what the, we're gonna calculate the expected value. And then we're going to, um, going to discuss the implications by uh, asking if someone, if someone were to buy 1,000 tickets, what would be their expected loss for playing, um, playing the game, uh, the, for buying the 1,000 lottery tickets. Okay, so let's write down the key information. So we have a $1 lottery ticket. And we have a, a one in five chance to win a free ticket and again that's uh, worth one dollar. We have a one in 100 chance uh, to win five dollars a one in uh, 100,000 chance to win $1,000 and a one in 1 million chance, uh, not 1 million, 10 million chance, sorry one in 10 million chance to win $1 million. So this is our, our uh, lottery ticket game that we're going to play. Uh, so uh, one lottery ticket costs a dollar and we have these, these uh, possible events and um, their values. So whenever we have uh, something like this, where we are, where we're dealing with several different types of events. And in the previous example, we only had three. Here we have uh, quite a few more than that. I think we have uh, five events here. Um, it's a good idea to make a table, which is kind of basically what we did in the, in the previous example, but uh, let's go ahead and make our, our table here. So we're going to do events, we're going to have again the value and the probability. Uh, but let's make a, a fourth column, which is going to be the value times the probability. And so this is what we're going to uh, this is what we're gonna look at here. Okay, so the events. First event, again, um, whenever you're looking at uh, doing the expected value for a gambling game, the first event is going to buy the ticket or to you know, uh, bet in into the game, whatever game you're playing. So we're going to look at, uh, we have a, the ticket purchased 
is going to be our first event. We buy the ticket and the ticket costs $1. So we're losing $1 and the probability is going to be one. So again, for this, for this, um, this first event, whenever we are looking at expected value for a gambling game, the first event is always going to be to play. So the probability is going to be one uh, or 100%. And we're going to look at the product there. So we'll have negative one times one, which is negative one. Okay, the uh, second thing that we had, so if we look at, at our events here, look back at our events, we have a one in five chance to win a free ticket. So the next event is we win a ticket. And the value of a ticket is $1. And that has a one in five probability. So we're going to do one fifth. So we have one times one fifth. And let's, when we are looking at these, let's round to the nearest uh, two decimal places since we're looking at money value. Um, so again, we, we use our four function here. We do the one times one fifth. And we get, in this case, 0 0.20. OK. Uh, the third event is we win $5. The chance for that, well, the value for that is $5. The chance for that is one in 100. So we're going to do our five times one over 100. And in this case, we get 0 0.05. Our fourth event is we win $1,000. And the value for that is $1,000. The chance for that is one in 10,000. So we're gonna take 1,000 times one over 10,000. And in this case, when we plug that in, we are going to get 0 0.1. And then the last is, uh, the last event is we win 1 million. So the value here is $1 million. The probability for that is one in 10 million. And for, so for this one, you have to be very careful when you are looking at <laughs> plugging this into the calculator, you wanna make sure you have the right number of zeros. So I have a million times one over 10 million. And again, I have to adjust the page here so I can write the value. And so that is going to be uh, 0 0.10. I think I messed up on this one. Let's see. Uh, yes, this should be 0 0.01, sorry. That one is 0 0.10. Okay, so here's our table. And um, when we're looking for the expected value, again, we are looking at the sum of the value times the probability for each event. Well, that notice is our fourth column right here. This is our uh, value times the probability. So the expected value For point one, let me take a look at that. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, I wrote down the probability wrong. That's not one in 10,000, that's one in 100,000. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, would, uh, that would make a, bit, a big difference, so sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so we should be good now. Um, let me know if I made any other, any other mistakes or if anything else doesn't come out right. <laughs> uh, apologies for that. Okay, um, so when we're looking at the expected value, we're actually looking at the sum 
of these values in our, our fourth column. So the expected value here is the sum of the fourth column. So in this case, that's going to be negative one. I'm gonna to have to readjust the, the page here so it will let me write on it. Uh, plus 0 0.20, plus 0 0.05, plus 0 0.01, plus 0 0.10, okay? So we plug those into our four function. So we have our negative one, plus 0 0.2, plus 0 0.05, plus 0 0.01, plus 0 0.1, and we should get negative 0 0.64. And so again, we're, we're uh, looking at a, at a gambling game, so let's say that's negative 64 cents. So the expected value of playing this lottery is we should expect to lose 64 cents for every dollar we we bet. So continuing on then, uh, if we buy uh, 100,000 tickets, oh, no, sorry, just 1,000 tickets, 1,000 tickets. And so that is, we've bet $1,000. Uh, what is our expected loss. Well, we're expecting to lose 64 cents for every dollar, uh, for every ticket, and we're buying 1,000 tickets, so we should expect negative uh, 64 cents times 1,000 we should expect to lose $640. Uh, that will be our loss for this game. Um, now this isn't going to be exact. Again, um, with probabilities, uh, this is um, what the average would be for buying 1,000 tickets. Uh, there is always that probability there, that uh, probability that we could win that $1 million. And in which case we would have a, a gain of money instead of a loss of money. But um, with the way that the probabilities work out and the value of each of, each of the events um, and its probability, we should expect to lose 64 cents for every dollar we spend on, on this lottery. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we get here. Would this, would this uh, lottery be worth it to play? would you say, yes or no? And that question, that really doesn't have a, have a right answer. Um, although I would highly discourage anyone from using this. Yeah, maybe not 1,000. One uh, you wouldn't want to uh, play this lottery um, hoping for hoping it to be your income because you're going to lose a lot more money than you spend on it. Um, or, sorry, I didn't say that right. You should expect to lose 64 cents for every, every dollar you, you spend on it. Okay. Um, so let's continue on. So the very last, very last concept here, this is not one that I'm going to be um, focusing too much on on, on the test, uh, but this is is important uh, an important concept, and there are a few homework questions on it. And this is the gambler's fallacy. So let's look at what is the gambler's fallacy and what does it mean. So the gambler's fallacy there should be two L's there fallacy. There we go. is the mistaken belief that 
a streak of bad luck. And then, sorry, let me make that legible. Bad luck makes a person do for some good luck. Or a streak of good luck. Now this is this is a fallacy because this is a false uh, a false statement. Um, if you're having a streak of bad luck, that doesn't mean that you're going to have a streak of good luck. Uh, if we take, for example, this this um, well, it, we can take any gambling game or any any probability, even if it, if it even if it is not gambling. Um, if we are rolling a six-sided die and uh, We've rolled the die 99 times. It doesn't matter what those previous 99 rolls were. The next roll, the probability of getting one is still one sixth. It's not, it's not affected by those previous rolls. Uh, and that's, that's going to be the same way for pretty much all of the gambling games that you're going to run across. All of the gambling games are um, independent uh, events. So, what occurs on one bet is not going to affect the next one at all. It, the, the probability is going to be the same. And so um, the gambler's fallacy is believing that if I've, if I've played this 99 times and had bad luck, then this 100th time surely has to be good luck. That's not, that's not the case. This, this next 100th time or role or whatever game you're playing still has the same probabilities. It's not, it's not going to be affected by the previous, uh, previous plays. Okay, so that's, that's chapter seven, that's section seven C. So that's all we're covering in chapter seven. Um, so that will be due uh, this weekend, seven uh, C, the reading check and the homework. Uh, we're also going to have a mini project for 7C. I'm going to make that available um, just as soon as we finish up the, the class meeting here. And there's going to be a, a, small, um, a small quiz for um, uh, academic conduct, which um, it's basically just a review of what academic conduct versus misconduct is and, and, and that. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so one chapter one will not be due. That will be due uh, next week. I need to fix those due dates. Um, yeah, so just chapter seven this week. Um, Okay, how about that? Did that, is that, is that fixed? Okay, yes, good, sorry, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, technical issues every once in a while. Okay, so I'm not sure where it cut out, so I'll just go back to just summarizing. Um, so this weekend on Sunday, uh, we will have uh, 7B and 7C, the reading checks on the homework, that's gonna be due on Pearson on Sunday. Then on web campus, we're going to have a, a mini quiz on um, uh, academic conduct versus misconduct. And that's just going to be a reminder. It's, it's um, basically free points. Read through it, agree to uh, you know, abide by the university's conduct policies and you're good to go. 
and then uh, mini project seven, which has uh, five questions on chapter seven material. Um, and uh, for mini project seven, you'll have, I believe I have it set as four attempts. You can take the quiz up to four times uh, and it will keep the highest, uh, highest score that you get for each problem. So that's, that's what, what all is going to be due this weekend on Sunday. I'm going to be fixing those. So I'll, I'll open up the uh, mini project and the, um, the, the quiz. That's Again, that's just a reminder of the, of the uh, academic conduct versus misconduct policy of the university um, and uh, make that available and fix the Pearson due dates. But only chapter seven will be due this Sunday. Um, Okay, so any, any questions on, on that or anything up to this point? Uh, I, I do also have office hours tonight from three to four. We'll also be on Zoom. Um, and I have the, the link to that in its own module on web campus. You can click on that to access the uh, office hours or you can always send me an email if you have any questions. Um, so, I have a question real quick. Oh, uh, yes. That's okay. So yes, the course. quiz, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the due date. I went away from my phone for a second. For the quiz for web campus, when was that due? Uh, that'll be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Just okay, like perfect. Thank one. you. Yep. Um, and the, okay, a couple of questions from the chat. Let's see. The information for the project uh, can be found in the theme one module. Uh, let, me, let me check what the exact uh, word for that is. Let me go to that. Um, the module is called Team One Overview, and the project for Team One is the is the project information for that. Uh, the mini project is going to be on Web Campus. So, um, so all of the the homework and the reading checks are all on Pearson. The mini projects will all be on Web Campus. I know that's a little bit confusing. I apologize, um, but that's that's where that would be. Um, I will also be uploading the notes and this this uh, the recording of this lecture um, to Web Campus. I'll make a new a new module for for this week for week two and upload this there. Um, uh, yes. So our next meeting will be in person unless you hear from me otherwise or hear from the university otherwise. Um, today, some stuff happened. I. Let's not get into that. That's, you know, life happens. Um, but unless you hear from me otherwise, um, we're still going to be meeting in person. That could change at any moment, but um, until, until you hear uh, from me otherwise, uh, we'll expect our next meeting to be in person. Yeah. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Uh, not yet. As soon as um, as soon as I as soon as we finish this this uh, meeting, um, I will go in and and make that available on Web Campus. So it it is there. I just forgot to make it available, but it will be available, and it will be due on Sunday at eleven fifty nine p.m. Uh, same time as the homework. Uh, so that will be available um, here in about ten minutes, and will be due on Sunday. Okay, um, thank you everyone for, for attending and for your patience um, with uh, you know, these, these hard times. Um, I do appreciate your, your patience and I apologize for the, for the late uh, notice on, on today being, having to be a, a remote lecture. Um, but uh, I do appreciate your patience. So if you have any questions, again, you can let me know either in, uh, during office hours or in an email and uh, we will just uh, otherwise have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Tuesday. So, uh, so let, me, let me close this out. Okay, have a good weekend everyone.